shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Hit that like button right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. This might be risky. DJ Hand to stand P. We in the building. Stamp. Uncle Jeff was popping. Yo, 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 man. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? You tell me. How's everything? Man, life is lovely. I have no complaints, man. No complaints. Yo, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you to, to do this. Uh, uh, let me shut the fuck up and let you talk right now because you know I'm going to start talking a lot. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You know when you always say that line, and I like girls strictly, but when you say that line, this is the ugliest thing I, I've ever been. You ain't lying. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I ain't trying to, I be telling niggas, niggas like like I I, I put something on and niggas I had something to say, and then they go out and ladies compliment it. That's where it is right there. I don't give a fiddler's fuck about how niggas feel about me. I'm a grown ass man. <laughs> That's why I love you, man. Shit you, like that. Shit like that. You remind shit me. Shit like that. Real, real talk. Real talk. Uh, uh, well, first off, uh, thank you so much for honoring me with this. I don't take this lightly, brother. Yes, this sir. is really. This is. This is. I'm gonna try not to cry. Yeah. Uh, second, thanks to your father. Mm. Your father put something good in the future, like like I have done which is the job of a father. And so many black fathers have not been allowed to do that unrestricted. And I believe when a masculine man is allowed to uh, healthily raise his son, you get a hamp. No, I appreciate it, man. Wow. That's humbling, man. Yeah, man, my pop's a hard working brother, man. You know, shout out and another devil dog, right? Indeed. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You know? Tell him I said was. Is he still with us? Yeah. 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 Okay. Tell him I said what's up. And thank yep. you. Yeah. No. Definitely. Definitely. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. A lot of yeah. good values instilled, and as you grow and you make mistakes, I made plenty of mistakes, but you know, you see it. You can hear the lessons. You know, um, my mom too, of course. But you can hear the lessons even when you're making bad decisions. Even when you're making good decisions and mistakes, those lessons definitely stick with us. You know, the coach. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I, I humbly appreciate that, man. We grinding, you know. Yes, I sir. um when I was putting this series together, so on Tuesdays, um, mm -hmm. it used to be Love and I. Um, and we used to go back and forth. Um, her her she owns her own business, super huh. duper busy now. So she's been That's traveling a lot. So That's I had to yes, yeah, hundred percent salute to her. And so I pivoted. To start doing these one-on-ones with people who are making waves, who I admire. I see the work and progress they put in, put in regardless if people, everybody agrees or disagrees. Mm -hmm. And then there was one time you hit the link for the first time. Mm -hmm. And um, Q, you know, she's an, an aspiring comedian. Yeah, um, Q. Comedian. Shout out to Q. What's up? Mm -hmm. And she, I'm looking, you know, and she don't really react when people hit the panel. But when you hit the panel, she had this smirk. Um, I ain't trying to air out, but she was kind of starstruck. Put him in a fucking bedroom. Get him out of here. Come on. You know, and I saw it, you know, and then I'm looking like, damn, okay, okay, okay. And it's starting to register. But, you know, she's in that field. So it'd be like a right. old school football player hit the link. I would instantly recognize, you know. Right. Um. So for her, it, it was like, damn. And she she said it on the show. And then so as we working through the space and I'm, I'm doing this series at these 12 o'clock, I said, well, shit, if you look in the earth and based on people who are on these panels, mm -hmm. it's arguable that you've made the most strides in terms of just entertainment specifically out of anybody who ever hit any one of these panels. And I don't think it's close. That's respect, you know? bro. That's respect. And thank you. Thank you very much uh, uh, for acknowledging uh, what. I what little I've done, what I what uh, and I can't even say little. Uh, real talk, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the people I've touched in the ways that I've touched them. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start using that. Pause. A lot of people I touched the ways <laughs> I touched them. Pause. Pause goes right there. Right? Yeah, uh, uh, I 
I don't take it lightly, man. I don't take it like a comedy is a medicine, bro. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I, I can't say that that uh, that I'm not in my same comedy gear, but uh, there's another pull on my life. Besides, I just did some comedy last night. Uh, that's on my my heart and my life, which is to uh, be. And, and people have fucked over the word holy. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to be the best person in an intimate relationship with the creator, doing as much good as I can. Yeah. So, Fine. and that's that's another reason I kind of you know, I come in and 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 sometimes I sound a little preachy, but it'd be on that shit. But okay, back on the road, yeah, Jack. yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, like, yeah, what you subscribe, know, what you know? yeah, we about to get into it. So, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, and tell a friend. Hit that like button right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. We have um 120 people in the building already. We have 50 likes. Not terrible, but get the likes up. Let me do some quick chat acknowledgement, then we will get it popping. Jonathan Earl was good. Hope all is well, man. Yeah, we're gonna talk about everything. Line O, salute. E dub in the building. I mean, was popping. Mel, you already know. Almond eyes, we see you. Love C already putting in work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Chocolate Bunny, what's up? Quinn C in the building. Salute. Mel, what's popping? Impress, I see you. Shalom. Embrace the grace. Salute. Keep on grinding. CC, happy Tuesday to you too, man. Melly Mel, salute. <laughs> Damn rutabagas. Son, kiss it. Get out the shalom. Shalom, 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 shalom. BJ was popping. I like it, man. We we locked in. We locked in. Stepping Wolf, salute my G. I got Quincy, cool gamer. What's up? D was popping. We like it. We like it. We like it. We like it. I need my damn mouse to charge, man. This damn scrolling. Nick was goody. Cali in the building. Yo, <laughs> it be so crazy. You walking around people, we don't even often know the impact. Um, you know, when I play the clip, it's like 10 people like, damn, I remember this one. Right. You know, right, and that's right. that's 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 30 years old. Yeah, bro. You know? Yeah. But it just so there was a gentleman, he plays a violin. Uh, I think for the symphony, like the orchestra. He's I mean, yo, yo, got, no white guy, he was in a subway just playing, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they walking by him like he a he a millionaire. He he played you know the best violinist in the world, and people just walking by, don't even know who that is playing in the middle of the subway. You know, right? When you got to play th a thousand dollars to go see him, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, it's funny how people value shit, bro. But then again, yeah. that's New York. You know, yeah, that was on the train, train and see Wesley Snipes on the fucking train. Yeah, yeah. people get it. People get desensitized, and that's one thing about the internet. The heroes have became regular because you have so much access, you hmm. know, um, it, it kind of brought them down to earth. You know, less is certainly more. Heather, Marcus, Joel in the building, Brittany, Uncle Rick was popping. T. Lee, salute my brother, Matreon in the building, Chocolate Bunny, I got you already. Lawrence was popping, my brother. Jerice was goody. EBD, salute. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. OG Speed. I like it, man. We getting it popping, man. Like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Hit that like button right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. Man. So, Uncle Jeff, let's start yes, from the be mid-beginning, right? Um, okay. it, it, it feels, and I'm saying feels on purpose. Um, mm -hmm. Blue Collar, salute. Um, very relevant. There was a conversation you and Fatty were having, if you remember, and it was just about when you were making that lane so to speak is what it sounded like right where you're trying to you trying to you got rid of some um attachment and some relationships you were building different ones etc mm -hmm. you know i would assume it was in just in this comedy career game which i would argue is the hardest trade out of all of them and i could be wrong but how, what made you get into comedy in the first place uh well uh when i was when i was little bro uh i had asthma and I was uh, tested uh, in the fifth grade as genius level. 
and uh my the the school system wanted to put me in the ninth grade and uh my family would let me so i just skip i was in the sixth grade for like two days and i went to mm -hmm. the seventh and i was little in the fifth grade mm -hmm. i was tiny in this in the seventh grade on the south side of chicago these little niggas was not having it <laughs> I, I, I all i did was read bro my my mother bought me some encyclopedias <laughs> And mm -hmm. she had to stop me at the letter L. I just read, 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 read. And I didn't have, I couldn't fight. So the <laughs> only thing I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I was not a natural fighter. I had to be put in martial arts class. I'm about to tell you this story right now. Okay. Uh, so it was this dude named Keith Winding, who was the, he was a thug, but he was the smartest amongst them. But he didn't have shit on me. He didn't have shit on me. Cause all I did was you couldn't get past me. Cause I didn't go outside. I just read. So he took it upon himself to beat me up for weeks <laughs> and one day i was in the fight circle and you could tell the fight circles in in, in the hood back in the day because there would be little 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 circles where it'd be little candy on the ground little candy wrappers in a circle some niggas was fighting in that circle sure i was always in the fight circle for a little bit and right i said man ain't no way i can get out of this mm -hmm. he said no you're going to hit me no matter what I say. you damn right. I said, well, I'm going to talk about your mama like the greasy, nasty, ashy, Bigfoot bear she looked like. <laughs> and all of a sudden, everybody went, oh, oh, And I looked around, and they was laughing. And then he broke my nose. And, and <laughs> I knew then that I could do something with this. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so... I came home with my nose broke and uh my grandmama was like we got to do something about this so she called one of my uncles who mm -hmm. uh was a, a boxer and a martial artist who was a little older than me and mm -hmm. he said all right i'm gonna take you back up to your school tomorrow mm -hmm. and long story short he beat the shit out of the dudes that ran with keith keith he he beat the he said who's the toughest niggas you run with the niggas came out he beat the shit out of them right in front of him he said if you put your hands on my nephew i got some of this for you Mm -hmm. oh wow thank you uncle arnie shut up that's gonna last for about a week and these niggas gonna be right on your ass you need to learn how to fight and so yeah. they put me in martial arts school uh mm -hmm. from there i joined the marines and there's a great story around why i joined the marines but it's a whole nother i've lived a hundred lives i i joined the marines and um mm -hmm. The one that I I was a fucking idiot, bro. I I just would whatever would come up would come out. I I really wasn't. Uh, uh, I just joined the Marines, get out the hood, and I was smart enough to get a really good MOS, a really good job in there. Yeah. And I used to make I used to do impressions of the sergeant major, the leader of the base. Yeah, yeah. You nigga, you grew up on the base, right? Did you grow no, up? No, like, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Well, Sergeant yeah. Major, dude, that's the highest rank in the Marine Corps you can give an enlisted man. Well, okay. the Sergeant Major of our squadron, I had his impression down. And I would do it. Uh, I would scare people. I would do shit as him. Him smoking weed. Him fucking with girls. And my friends thought that shit was hilarious. So one day mm -hmm. we was outside the chow hall or the mm -hmm. cafeteria. And I was doing that shit and they was laughing and all of a sudden they stopped. I said, he right behind me, huh? And he was. <laughs> and he said, I don't see you in my office at 1300. Mm -hmm. So I went up there and then I put my shit on. I'm standing there. I'm thinking, I'm this motherfucker about to send me out in the middle of nowhere. He said, uh, young man, that's the best impression of me I've ever heard. And tomorrow for inspection, I'm not going to talk to the, to the squadron. You gonna talk to him as me. So I'm like, wow, okay. So the next day, uh, a squ my squadron was about three hundred people. Mm -hmm. I knew them all because mm -hmm. people just the uh, one one of my superiors said, Brown, you know what your problem is? Is when people see you, they think it's time to fuck off. I yeah. don't know. That's not my problem, Gunny. I believe that's your problem. <laughs> and and uh, so I was that dude. Mm -hmm. So everybody's out there and the, 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 the squadron is standing on the flight deck and I'm standing in a hangar. Okay. And I call them squad bay. Tear up. They all these boots come together. Excuse me, squadron. Tear up. So all these boots come together. 
And I go, there's going to be a few changes around here, starting with this. And I stepped out, and everybody exploded. Because they knew me. <laughs> they knew I used to do this. Shit. I've done it for weeks, for months. I've been doing it. Everybody knew I did it. They thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. And that explosion of laughter from them. I said, yeah, this is what I got to do. Mm -hmm. And I had studied comedy already, man. I was already a Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor expert. Because I, I listened to the albums over and over. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how it got started. And then my friends made me get on, took me to the comedy store in June of 86. That was the first time I got on stage. And it took off from, from there when I got back and got on. Okay. So who are, who's the, who's your top five co comedians? Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, you, 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 you don't know what you're looking at if you don't say Richard Pryor. <laughs> okay is uh, he number one or is this any order it's i can't put him in order i can't okay. uh all right let yeah who's the mount rushmore my mount Rush is okay sinbad has to be on it because sinbad we'll get to that later i learned how to do comedy on my own sinbad mm -hmm. taught me how to do shows when you saw me on def jam that's me knowing how to do comedy when you see me on comic view when i do my grandstand special that's me knowing yeah. how to show it's a okay. whole different uh, so so Sinbad, Richard Pryor, wow, George Carlin, mm. Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. Uh uh um it, that's four. That's four. The fifth one, bruh, gotta be George Lopez. What? George Lopez, brother. Holy wow, George Lopez. Wow, that My is hero. that is a different top five. I, I tell you what, I tell you what, watch the special Why You Crying by George Lopez. Take the time out. I can't get the it, so George Lopez and Sinbad, them ones threw me off a little bit. Well, you know, you know why? Because dude, they're my hero. Sinbad is my hero. Uh George is one of them, and I've written for them both. Okay. I writ I've written for them both and 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 I know what I'm looking at. So okay. it's uh to to to, to the technicians they are. It, it, it's it's because I'm in the game. It's like if I ask you your top five, what what position do you play him? I played um linebacker, strong safety, outside linebacker. This was 30 pounds ago. Okay. Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> I bet you, I bet you. If I ask you your top five, because of your because of the position you play, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a gang of people who don't know football that don't know who they are. Yeah. They don't know why you like you like that dude because of his sidestep. I'm talking. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> you like this dude? I just you know because I respect like that. Shit like that. I respect like that. Like football that. and that it's a science and that it it what it takes to do well. Like uh, uh, mm -hmm. Matt, I used to love to hear Matt and break oh, down yeah. football because he made me immediately aware of how fucking ign ignorant I was about it. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't be stupid. You may not be intelligent from a from a social rubric. You may not mm -hmm. be intelligent, but you can't be stupid and play football well. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Those, yeah. yeah. No, that that okay. See that you know what you're looking at. Yeah, they, right. see that 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 makes a huge difference. Um, when I'm watching a football game, the the irony is I very rarely watch the football. Right. Like I'm not even looking at the quarterback a lot of the time. Oftentimes I'm looking at like the defense. So yeah, you okay? Okay. Shit like that. Shit like that. Yeah, that shit makes like sense. That, that like makes that. sense. Yeah, you you. There's people. My wife is used to it now. I'm horrible to watch TV or movies with. Mm -hmm. Bad lighting, soundstage, <laughs> mm -hmm. doesn't match. Mm -hmm. That cup wasn't there. The mm -hmm. plot is fucked. We're at 22 minutes and we don't know what's about that. I'm that dude. <laughs> yeah, real. Yeah, I do the same thing with uh DJ. When I go to the club, I'm like, ah, that transition wasn't great. Right, <laughs> and my right. wife is like, <laughs> and everybody else is right here. <laughs> And then it's another DJ in the room over here on the corner. 
Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And me. then I always know if somebody DJing or aspiring because I yeah. see their phone yeah. strategically Shazam and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what That's, I mean? <laughs> for those of you who don't know what in com in, in the world of comedy, that dude is joke stealing right there. He yeah. joke stealing when he's shazamming because he finna put his set together like your shit. Yeah, oh 100 percent I've heard myself pause in, in a lot of DJs, um, you know, in certain areas, you know. Um, speaking of which <laughs> I need to understand joke stealing, right? Because I know people write and people will um, brainstorm together, work yeah. through sets. Mm -hmm. What is defined as joke stealing? I've heard it come up. Who have I heard say it off? Obviously, with the Cat Williams stuff. Yeah. You know, Shout just out. in terms of his different jokes and et cetera. Like, what is what? What is joke stealing? Robin, okay. what's up? JT, what's up? Uh, Go ahead, my bad. Okay, joke stealing is when um, one comedian basically takes the punchline and or the rhythm and or the cadence of another comic's joke. Hmm. It's not, you can't, bruh, white people do it different, which is just fucking lazy. Okay. Uh, you can't steal that. That's a premise. Okay. Okay. These are the breakdowns of what comedy is. A premise is what you want to talk about. I call that the unfunny sentence. I'm okay. giving y'all some of the game that I give in Uncle Jeff's comedy kung fu school. The okay. premise you have to have a solid unfunny sentence to start with, with your joke. The setup is where you are uh, uh, setting up the premise or concept. Man, uh, I was on the train today, blah, 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 that part. The punchline is what is different, what is blaringly obvious, or what I didn't see coming. If you do exactly what I did, you stole my joke. Because that's a lot of work. Okay. It's a lot of work. Everybody uh, uh, <clears throat> jokes. Uh, uh, shout out to Mike Epps. Uh, 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 fucking the, the, the closest thing to Richard Pryor to me. Richard Pryor then. I mean uh, Mike Epps. Then George Lopez. Uh, hmm. That. Uh, uh, dudes like him. Mike bruh it's hard to steal a joke from Mike Epps because there's so much Mike in it mm. it's so much I saw I, I saw Mike Epps one night Mike Epps is one of the, the comics there are a few comics I've seen do this go so hard that uh, I've almost done it but you go so hard that the people ask you to stop uh, Mike was on stage and this girl kept talking and Mike said, she was in the front. He said, every time you start talking, I'm going to hit you on the head with this mic. Mm -hmm. Nigga, she started talking. He said, boop. Hamp, by the fifth boop, niggas was running out of the room. <laughs> it was fucking hilarious because of Mike. And nobody else could do that. You're mm -hmm. not going to be. That is one thing. Mm -hmm. Now, when I talk about how my dad was a football coach and my grandfather was a Marine and my dad ran my house like a Marine and a football coach. This is one of your children as a comedian 20 years from now. Hmm. And then another motherfucker come and go on and say, well, my dad was a baseball coach and his dad was in the army. Nigga, you are stealing Hamp's joke because even if those things are true, you have to respect that Hamp took the steps first. So, or Hamp's baby took the steps first. So you got to step in another direction now. If not, mm. you're stealing. Now, here's what I think of joke thieves. Damn. Brother, to, to, you know I'm long-winded. Brother, do you know how, what noble 
what noble a, 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 a job a comedian is right now with all the pain people going through uh, hmm. uh yeah. what what and how fantastic that job is you get to do what everybody else in the world wish they could stand up in the middle of a room full of people and say exactly what's on your mind mm. that is people are paying you to do that so if i'm gonna say what's on somebody else's mind mm -hmm. what does that say about what i think about my own thoughts damn I'm a fucking shit like coward. that. Shit like that. Shit like they're that. They're cowards. Shit like that. Shit like that. They're fucking cowards because they're afraid of the work. They're so addicted to the laughter that they will steal another man's thoughts and fuck them. Can you not? I don't want to make a mess of anything. Okay. Any uh, any notorious joke stealers or egregious joke stolen? Uh, like, well, I can. But I, I tell you this, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about writing a documentary called okay. You Tell Me. Okay. You Tell Me. Because this is the truth. The only, the only black celebrity comic from the 90s that I have not met personally is Eddie Murphy. Okay. And 40% of them I've written for. Okay. Uh, it's I, I because I'm I've, the ones that have stolen from me. Hmm. I have, uh, your brother. Whoo, shit! You can run that list, Doc. But what what I tell people to do is like a, look up opera from the hood. Okay, that's a bit that I'm very well known for. It's like the, uh, 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 somehow. Oh, you must have cut it out of that. That, you got that from Jeff, Def Jam uh, Volume Four. I'm that, not even that. sure. I had uh, to, I was looking for like one that was really clear, so uh -huh. it just had that five minute segment. That was the most like clear, visually clear one. Oh, they cut a bunch of shit out, bro. They cut a bunch mm -hmm. of shit out. I had a much better set than that. Anyway, uh, uh, my point is that I've I've tried to bury the hatchet with with because he's a black man and we in crisis, so I don't have. I, I I ain't got time. The young Jeff Brown had time for that. This one don't. So I don't want to. I I can tell you the jokes. I can tell you that uh, that joke you just saw there about uh spelling uh, words the wrong way. Spelling the wrong words. words, words yeah. Words are the wrong words. Well, there's yeah. a famous black comedian that's touring with that joke right now. Right now. Right now. Mm. I won't say his name, but but uh uh, he's very funny. But he stole that joke. Flat mm. stole it. Didn't pay for it. Didn't call me. Everybody know where that joke live. A lot of times, uh, there, there are a lot of cats. Uh, uh, the, the, yeah, I, I took it this far. Because, because, bro, I didn't, trust me. Y'all y'all don't like me being long with it. Audiences don't either. I done been booed. Ooh, hemp. Shit. I, I've rode, rode, rode a roller coaster, bro. I didn't have standing O in front of 25,000 people. And nigga been chased to my car. I've I, I, I've had the boat. Um, mm -hmm. and back in the day, there was this v another very well known stand up comedian who was doing. He he basically did my joke in front of me in the improv one night. Mm. So I start, and this is this is a different Jeff Brown. This is Jeff Brown, not long out the Marine Corps boxing martial arts jeff brown this is not this dude mm -hmm. i start going around town and i would open my show up with hi i'm jeff brown i'm selling t-shirts they say i write for this comic on the front and on the back they say whether i like it or not and it started <laughs> getting around that i was saying it which i wanted it to mm -hmm. dude said uh y'all tell jeff i'm looking for him all right so i saw him backstage at the comedy in the comedy store one night i said hey man i heard you was looking for me damn he didn't say shit. and we can't and, yeah. and so we can't get can we get <laughs> so, so so oh let me finish the story so all right, we, come all outside, right. we come outside and apparently somebody had gassed him up 
another mm. dude I think that was with him gassed him up, who later became a buddy of mine. I thought it was going to do both of them. So he came out and he said, uh, I heard you was talking about me. I said, I'm going to tell you this, bro. Here's what I say about you. I say that you are the, and it's a huge hint. I say, watching you on stage, you are the closest thing to Jerry Lewis I have ever seen. You are brilliant. But does that give you the right to take my joke and put a round off in it and now it's yours? It doesn't. That's what I say. And I say, pick up the phone like other people and call me if you want me to write. Well, if you say anything else about me, you ain't going to be talking about nobody <laughs> else. I said, why? Well, allow me to retort. And he said, I don't, well, I ain't as smart as you. I don't know what that means. I said, well, a lot of people aren't as smart as me. Don't be so hard on yourself. Not the point. Mm -hmm. but here's what we're going to do. If we get to fight now here in front of the comedy store on Sunset Boulevard, there's a sheriff's car in the middle of the street. It's shared. They be waiting on niggas to do this. This was Guy Tory's Fat Tuesday, that documentary you saw. There's a real short clip of me in there. Uh, I said, uh, uh, they gonna break this up. They gonna run over here. We gonna, one of us or both of us gonna get arrested. Let's not do it this way. I work out at the Hollywood Boxing Gym three days a week. How about you come down and I rent the ring and we can fight like a couple of fucking dogs. If that's what you really, if that's what you really feel it. Cause I don't want to fuck guys night up, but I certainly would like to make you piss blood. Mm. Let's do it. <laughs> so he walked down the street with his friends and then he started playing that shit. Let me go when he went down the street. So, cause I really didn't like this dude at that time. I got in contact with his people. I said, look, let's do this. I'm going to get three comedians and you get whoever you want. Cause I know three other comedians that, it's nice with they shit to get mm -hmm. me in shape. We'll film me getting in shape, film him getting in shape, and we can get in the ring and get the money to charity because mm -hmm. he's a known joke thief. And I would like nothing more than to polish his fucking ass up. Mm -hmm. What do you say? They declined. Mm -hmm. It's a <laughs> lot of comics take it far, man. Keenan used to, Keenan, Keenan Ivory Wayans, nigga, that nigga right there put them doorknobs on a gang of dudes behind the comedy store. He did not fuck around behind his jokes. You tell a Keenan joke, you'll see Keenan. It was <laughs> so as soon as it took it that personal. For me, I just knew you were a coward and I'm going to say some shit and I'm going to outright you because I can write. I'll just write some more and then I'm going to say what I got to say about you and then one of us going to whoop the other one ass if you get in my face. That's really where I was back then. Mm -hmm. And you, you just outgrow that. But joke thievery is rampant, bro. To to bring it back around, shout out to Cat Williams. Uh, he was right. It's niggas that steal. They steal from smaller comics, take it on the road. And now it looks like when the smaller comic, because that's not what you, you don't just steal the joke. You steal the 15 times, the 20, the 30, the 45 times he had to tell it to get it to work, the gas money, the lamenting, the... Uh, you steal all of that when you rob somebody of their joke. That's why it's not, I, I don't have any respect for joke thieves. I don't. Man, oh man, that is crazy. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend, hit that like button right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. Yeah, I'm not going to pry, but I just, damn, I'm trying to think. When you said Jerry Lewis, I'm trying to tie it together. Maybe the chat is more, um, Ah, <laughs> damn! Wow, shit like that, shit like that, shit like that. Shit All right, like that. Not, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I, that's I, because I, I ain't trying to start, I, I, I ain't trying to start no shit with nobody now. Yeah, I, ain't, yeah. I don't, I'm never gonna be in that now. Yeah. Uh, there is a there, there is some 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 uh, a, a well known black comic now that I gave a pass and didn't speak on when he said some foul shit about me, but he's not gonna get that opportunity again People. no 100% 100% I definitely saw some clips but you know the hell with them I don't know them niggas you know what I mean um, yeah real talk man real talk and we can talk and again nothing is all you know me man nothing yeah. is all what yes next I'm talking too much shut up yeah man. but I, I like things to be clean though you know positivity is, is important you know as is the truth you know what I mean so I was wondering this they get mixed reviews a lot of the times Mm -hmm. female comics 
Are okay. they funny? Uh, well, here's the truth. Just like golf, basketball, football, mm -hmm. baseball, mm -hmm. in any endeavor that men have to go into, generally, we're a little better, stronger, faster than women. Comedy is an exception. Uh, there are a few handicaps women have. Society handicaps women in comedy because it allows them to lie. Hmm. You ain't that tall. Your hair ain't that. It's, it's, there's some things I can't say to you. So because of that, when you go on stage, unless you strip back from the people and tell them you don't have to take that lot, take the lie glasses off. We're going to talk like people. Don't look at me as a woman. Look at me as saying some funny shit. And the only way you can do that is by not going on stage and leaning on your period. Leaning on how men ain't shit. Leaning on your vibrator. You have to have other things to say. And the women that do, nigga, some more. Some more is a fucking samurai. Hmm. Uh, Adele Givens, nigga? Whoa! So, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, well, question about some more when we were younger, right? We would tune into some more because of how, how do you say it? She's voluptuous. Oh, right? she ain't hard to look at at all. Her, her breast always was standing up. Do you think yeah. her success looks different? If she didn't have that, like as what? young boys, we were what 15, right? We love watching some more, right? On comic view, maybe, maybe a little bit younger. And we're like, yo, some more. And we would go watch for that reason, just as young, young boys. Of Adele, course. Adele, less likely. <laughs> like, do you think that that un is that an unfortunate circumstance tied to their success at all? Attractiveness, or you think yeah, comedians well, can get away? Well, no, because uh, uh, explain. And, and this is no diss. She just ain't every dude's type. Explain Melanie Camacho. Another fucking samurai. Melanie Camacho. Bro, uh, 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 explain what's my girl? Coco Brown. I yeah. tell Coco Brown to her face. You hit like a man. Dudes yeah. are funnier. Dudes are funnier. Uh, uh, so, and, and please, dude, do not avoid. Do not a please. Uh, uh, yeah, let me put it this way: read all your uh, uh, read all your super chats, sir, because there's one in one in in general that I'm itching to get to, but we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah, br brother, I I I judge comics like this, and I don't know if you can tell I'm kind of arrogant. Uh, if you don't have three jokes, I wish I wrote. I ain't gonna be funky to you. I just don't fuck with you. Mm -hmm. the, the ladies I just put up, all oh, bruh, all mm -hmm. them ladies got the some more got a joke that I can't tell because I'm a man that's fucking brilliant. You can't talk to me any kind of way if your dick's small. You need to be courteous when you call me on the phone. I remember that joke. I nigga. That joke is brilliant. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant from a the, from a you watch feet when you watch football perspective. That joke is fucking yeah. brilliant. shit like that. Yeah, shit like yeah, that, that. Shit like that. that. Shit. I, I remember that joke. Tell, yeah, I can't tell yeah. that joke, nigga. But I can I can respect how brilliant it is. Uh -huh. I can it's not talking about her period. It's not leaning on men, ain't shit. It's not lazy. <laughs> it's not I'm lazy. <laughs> it's it's just so uh, you gotta respect that shit. Yeah. So, and that's, for me, that's, I respect the, when I look at a joke, I flip it open and it's like, I'm looking in the back of an old school pocket watch with the little wheels and gears mm -hmm. turning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, where you came from, how you got there. I'm, 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 I'm listening to all of that, bro. Like a, like a piece of jazz music. I listen to, to comedy. So yeah, I'm in a different, I'm in a different space with, but wow. there are some women that, that are, but any comic. Any comment. If you fat, black, white, Jewish, 
a, a, a handicapped, whatever your thing is, if that's all or most of your comedy, mm -hmm. after the first four minutes to let me know who you are, you lazy and you suck. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> speaking of sucks. Yeah. Actually not speaking of sucks, but just I'm just thinking about the shit that was being said. And you don't have to go too far into detail with this. Let's do but it. was 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 Cat Williams more wrong than right with the stuff he was saying? Uh shout out to Cat Williams. And uh I have a, a close personal story to share with you about Cat Williams. Uh here was here is the thing there's a difference between right and accurate yes okay uh mm. you a holy man bro you already know where i'm going yeah uh cat yeah. williams was right but the naysayers and the people on low frequencies, lower frequencies, the square and cube thinkers, you've heard me break down test rack, right? Yeah. The square and cube thinkers, all they could 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 focus on was his accuracy, mm -hmm. which generally is an earmark when you're in a conversation for a nigga that ain't shit. Mm -hmm. If you have a conversation yeah. and you have an issue with somebody and they don't focus on your right, they focus on your accuracy. They on some bullshit. Hmm. And I'm talking about between you. I'm not talking about in a debate where I ask you to qualify a source. Yeah. If you're going to spit the source out, then you need to qualify it. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying you have no right to spit out a source that you don't qualify. Hmm. So <clears throat> from the place that he was right, it's some freak shit going on in Hollywood and it's some freak shit gatekeepers that keep you from getting to certain levels unless you do freak shit. And wow. I, believe, I believe that as I sit here in this earth suit, that that is the truth. Uh, do, do, do people do the shit that he said they do? Do big comics steal from smaller comics? Do, do, com do now, <clears throat> I believe people get shit over other people because it ain't no rules to this. Mm -hmm. Ain't no rules, nigga. It's laws. Yeah. Ain't no rules. Yeah. So he, so he's right there. Cat just told the 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 truth from his perspective, and I can't say that he was wrong. I, I believe he was right, and I don't give a fuck about what he was accurate about. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend, hit that like button right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. Lord Lou, salute, man. I think you became a member yesterday. Appreciate you, my brother. What up, buzzin', buzzin', birds, flip a dozen, dozen. Holla at your boy, boy, you thought your cousin wasn't. TBE trucking with the five ounces, 5150 for life. Jeff, you are a mild comedian. You want to respond okay. to this? Oh, I would love to. Mm-hmm. Uh... And to that, I say, uh, uh, Brother TBE, thank you. Thank you. Because you're right. You're right. I'm not, I'm not the best comedian in the world. I'm not. There are dudes I know that are funnier than me. There are dudes I know that are better than me. I write for a few of them. The good thing is, the lucky thing, for those of you, you who believe in it, is that that's not what my creator requires. You see, if my creator required for me to be more than a mild comedian and I wasn't, you might have been able to hit my ego with that. That might have been, that might have landed where you, where you aimed. But it doesn't, brother, because I got my pain body out of the way. It's going to be really hard for someone I don't know on a monitor to make me feel a certain way about chasing my dreams and feeding my family with it. About going around the world for free. Staying in the best hotels, eating the best food, fucking the baddest broads. 
backstage passes to shit in the words of Prince. I hate to say this, nigga, please. I go places you will never go. So if Mile got me that, if Mile, if Mile got me the respect of my peers, my subordinates, and my superiors, if Mile got me that, if Mile got me this thing that 5150 won't get you, that comedian you represent is much funnier than me. He just ain't half the man. Not one person that buys a ticket to his show will trust him with a family secret. I've talked 14 people out of killing themselves from this mild place, brother. So I thank you for pointing it out. And God bless you. Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. Bro, when you get your ego out the way, it's impossible. That's that's some that's some Jedi shit, bro. That's it. Yeah. Are you familiar with the book The Power of Now? by uh, uh yes he just stole it he straight fucking stole that joke i used to write for steve harvey but he stole that joke yes you mean when he put it up on the sign and come time about and both of them look at the dates when he was when he did it on a uh, showtime at the apollo i had already done that again in 94 and then in 97 when i perfected the joke if you uh uh, uh i'm getting all my clips and shit together um so what's the joke specifically jeff so the question is jt sloop my brother with the final says jeff did you sell steve harvey that both of them joke quote unquote joke or did he just steal it hey flat fucking stole it here's the joke okay that was good you, you saw me on, on on stage doing scrabble uh uh with with my uncle snooky and i actually had and this is yes i actually have an uncle snooky it's my daddy's brother where I go, uh, you ever, you ever, uh, uh, it was in that clip we just played. Yeah. Well, 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 it's, it's that part of that joke where he took, uh, uh, both of them, Fidna, Pionsel, and Come Tomba and wrote them on cards and did it in front of, uh, Showtime at the Apollo. That time, because yes, there are, you it's going to be very hard other than eddie murphy to name a black comedian that i didn't write for or didn't steal from me and if you look through it you can go wait a minute that's that's not somebody did that before and chances are you heard that somebody i was playing in the background of a lot of niggas shit like uh the there was a time in the 90s and early 2000s where everybody you remember there was a, a showtime uh stand-up special uh uh uh, uh com a and e's comedy on the road eating evening at the improv comic strip live uh every comic television show i i did i did them all i did yeah. them all i wrote sets for them all and so niggas would see that on mainstream tv and mm -hmm. flip it and take it to the chitlin circuit and make money with it mm -hmm. I got countless accounts of that, bro. Wow. A lot of niggas stole from me. Wow. Shit like that. 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 Shit like so that. So when I hear, again, when I hear, you know, uh, 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 anything about my ability on stage, first off, there are people who don't miss a show. When I go do a show, they don't miss a show because they like what I do. Uh, Ruth Chris don't sell as much as Oscar Mayer. They don't. So I do my shit different. I do I, I do it how I do it. And I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't make art for people. I make art and I present it to people. And then they decide. And it's mm -hmm. up to them. It's up to them. I, I don't get, that's the thing about comedy. Nigga, you, if you wanted to play the saxophone ham, you could go buy a saxophone, mm -hmm. sit in the park a half hour a day, and you would know when you were good when people would stop throwing food at you. You would yeah. know. With comedy, nigga, that don't work like that. There's mm -hmm. only one place to do comedy. You can't do it in the mirror. You can't do it in the living room. You can't, do, you have to get on stage in front of people who speak English and face forward and listen. And let them tell you what's funny. Damn. Because you don't know. 
You can't practice this shit nowhere. Imagine, imagine <laughs> him. Hmm. All your team, all the kids you coach could only practice in games. <laughs> what... Maybe, man. Nigga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like and that. the Black Dragon with the Falao says, I'm not the quote unquote funniest, but standing up on stage with a mic in your hand feels liberating. You can express comedy in many ways. People respond to you. <laughs> Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Hit that like button right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. Uncle Jeff. Yes, sir. There's been a wave of social media comedians. Mm -hmm. You have, um, who am I thinking of? Um, why that name? Country Wayne, which I've seen him do a lot of stand up. Um, mm -hmm. A bunch of those fellas. What's the guy that says, hey, big fella? I, their names are slipping my mind. Big but this. Who? Big Ja. Big Ja. Yeah, all those guys, yeah. you know? And they're seemingly funny in those skits. Now, one thing I do know about those skits is you can rehearse them, edit, cut, paste, right? You yeah. get a second chance. Yeah. Um, that's why when people are comparing rappers now and then mm -hmm. in the in the in the 90s, you could hear the breath control, right? When they're rapping through, you would hear a Right, right now, it's just all edited, 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 edited. So the the skill level, right, and the talent, just just lung capacity made a difference. That's why when Nas is on stage, if you never heard Nas in person, you don't know what fucking rapping is. Just I have to say it, like the breath control, how how calm, just fluid. He goes, mm -hmm. it, it's it's amazing. He just standing there. You know, Nas don't do too much. No, you know, but it, it's something. Yeah, it's just the aura. Ha ha, Desi Banks, they named them in the chat. DC yeah, Young yeah. Okay. What do you think about that? I don't know if it's his own genre, them coming up, calling themselves comedians. Is, is it okay? Well, uh, bro, how do I put this? First, they are exactly what they, yes, they are exactly what they are supposed to be for who they are supposed to be that for. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have to judge them by the slice of reality in the time that they are in. Because first, the, the, the second off, the school I went to is closed. They don't, th there's no uh, 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 Arsenio Hall for them to watch. There's no George Lopez for them to watch. There's no, to, there's, there, who, who did they watch? They are taking their sense of humor and translating it in a different medium to people who watch it the way they want to watch it. Now, to say that that is the same thing as standing in, yeah, anybody can be funny at the water cooler. Yeah. Can you be funny tomorrow night? For 45 minutes in front of a room full of strangers. That's a comedian. Yeah. God. Does man. that art form? Yes. It's like me trying to indict these new dudes because they don't know the style of kung fu that I do. And the and the school is closed. The, the school is closed. Okay. I can't indict you. I can teach you my style of kung fu if you want it. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen them uh uh like when they go in the laugh factory, they don't have as strong as set as say a T to the motherfucking K. You mm -hmm. ain't gonna have it. Uh 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 yeah, there you go. Robert just said it. Tony Baker, bruh, Tony Baker is old school kung fu and he is fucking hilarious. I love Tony Baker. He came up with social media? Yes. He's one is well, he's right on that cusp, bro. Yeah, I thought so. Like, what about Craig Smith? I feel like those two gentlemen, like, right on the cusp, or no, what do you think? Yeah, Maybe yeah, I'm Craig Smith, another one, funny bastard that 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 is on the cusp. But uh these dudes that are past that, I yeah. can't I can't indict them, bro. Niggas want you to go, oh, but they ain't funny, because they don't want dude. They didn't take your road, and they're not taking your road to to entertain the people you entertained. A lot of your fans are dead. <laughs> wow! But do you? But do they? Do they get to call themselves comedians? Well, uh, two two other comedians, right? So here's what I, here's what I say: 
And again, you know, I think football is 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 is, goes right along with life. You can use it for any situation. Sure. There's people that play football that aren't football players. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Yes. Period. And you can tell, you know, when I coach the kids and it happens primarily a lot in high school. Right. Generally speaking, football players play college ball at a high level. Right. But Mm -hmm. there's a there's a hitch, Uncle Jeff before contact that football players just don't have right it's a little bit of fear you see right oh oh you mean this shit yeah and not yeah. even even so blatant, just a that little energy. bit of something right and i'm yeah. like okay you you like football but you ain't a foot this is not in your blood no you know, and they could be effective but they there's levels you to it you know right so what and, and so now i liken that to the gentleman that we reference right they're funny no right. question are they comedians? Could they tell you, Uncle Jeff, I'm a comedian? You ain't never been a loss for words since I know you. Put him in a fucking bedroom. Get him out of here. Come on. <laughs> uh, yes. Hmm. And I, I, yes. In the loosest sense of the word, yes. I am not. That's like asking Miles Davis, is Kenny G a musician? Yeah, but we don't play to the same crowd. Hmm. There is this is the this is the problem with what you're saying here. Okay. Is that I can't. I, I, they are, they they are responding to the frequency that their people are on, and they okay. are making them laugh. Yeah, are they doing it like the dudes that I do it? No, no. If you if you chain them to my style of art form, are they at a disadvantage? Yes, but they no longer have to be chained to my style. Are they good at what they do? Yes, I like some of it. Some of it, I go, you should have cut, you should have backed that to here. You should have done it. But I'm looking at it from a I've been writing for three decades perspective. Mm-hmm. So uh to just say these young dudes ain't funny, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. To say these young dudes ain't as funny as the older dudes, well, there's, I, I'll say that. I'll say that I think that older dudes are funnier. I'll say that there are some older dudes that I think are funnier, but that's because they're tuned to my ear. Yeah. They're tuned yeah. to my ear. I can't. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna take you off of. I'm gonna take you off of grass, put you on turf, and, and talk shit about the differences. I'm not gonna do that. What I will say. Is that it would serve them to like generals. Or the, nigga, I've said this a thousand times. Bakers, mm-hmm. the pilots, study your history. Study what came before you. Study comedy. And then you'll understand that since the the the, the, the uh since the beginning of recorded human history, the rules to comedy have not changed. Okay. They haven't. Yeah. They're still the same shit. Your boy Joel say, yeah, another one. Don DC Curry. Nigga, mm-hmm. if you get a chance, you go see him live. I've seen Don D- DC Curry is another one. I've seen go so hard, the audience tell him to stop. Hmm. Stop. Wait. Stop. He that hard. He the bruh. Go see Don DC Curry. Yeah. Don DC Curry's school of comedy is closed. So how am I going to indict these dudes because they don't know it? Okay, okay. Interesting point. I actually and love C and I are on the same page. Cause I wanna this take that you just gave, mm-hmm. I want to ask you about a different um conversational topic. Do okay. we apply the same logic um with men and women dating, mm-hmm. or do we still expect the young boys to have the bravado and intestinal fortitude like like you guys had, but my, so I think that's an awesome question to answer. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do want to ask one more question. Mike, what's up? Torrance, what's up? Prince, Empress, Metreon. Okay. I'm 100. What's popping? Andre Cable, salute. Uh, So Ignit, what's popping? Um, I do want to ask though. Yeah. Who's, Who's a comedian that's suppo- that was supposed to be Dave Chappelle? 
Oh, Tony Woods. Hmm. Tony Woods. He'll tell you himself he got his style from Tony Woods. And Tony Woods is fucking hilarious. Let me let me rephrase. Not the style, but that big. I could I could you could substitute Dave Spell oh. with, with Kevin Hart. Like who's supposed to be that? Um either either whether they be passed or like who's supposed to be the the Richard Pryor, Kevin Hart, etc. You don't know. That yeah, are, uh, uh, I'll tell you the funniest motherfucker you have never seen. You don't know. You don't know him as well as you should. And his mm -hmm. name is Daryl Heath. Daryl Heath. Daryl Heath is the closest thing to comedy genius I can think of. Damn, I don't know Daryl Heath. Okay, try to find. Look up Daryl Heath, pimp with a baseball. He did this bit. On Def Jam, that is still one of the funniest things I've ever fucking seen. Where he goes, uh, I had a friend that used to be a major league baseball player, but he got hurt and he started pimping. Mm -hmm. so when girls didn't owe him his money, they try to get away from him. And the girl run, and he becomes the girl, the street, and the pimp, and he throws the ball. And then hits himself in the back of the head with the mic and collapses on the stage. Nigga, brilliant. Rodman is under fucking rated. Rodman underrated. Uh, uh, I, I think, but to to the dude that I don't understand why he's not huger, Daryl Heath. Okay. Okay. There, okay. there are a few of them. Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. In the back of my head, because. Of this shit, and you know, I only smoke the best. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Sure. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend, hit that like button right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. And I, I, I tell you another thing I grade on is subject matter. Hmm. The next time you think a comic is great, mm -hmm. write down how many subjects he speaks on. <clears throat> okay. Interesting. Shit like that. Shit like Noted. that. Shit like that. Shit like Uncut that. Uncut Underground was yeah. popping with the ten ounces. Skit comics can't fuck with stand up comics. I wish they wouldn't bring the skit comics on the. I wish they wouldn't bring the skit comics on the road with them. Skinny boy, twenty boy was popping. My brother with the two dollars. Rob man is underrated. EBD with the two dollars. I remember that joke. We still tell it sometimes. <laughs> so Uncle Jeff sir let's get into the proverbial penis and vagina conversation we always seem to have okay you know the game has changed you and i have had a an awesome discourse about mm -hmm. being outside with these women then versus now and how mm -hmm. social media and etc um has made it uberly different you know you told us that you make a woman laugh for i think it was eight hours straight or 12 hours straight you can get to her that's why they stay away from ugly funny men yeah but the men of today don't even approach yeah. um fear is a mind killer so we had that back and forth but i guess i'm asking the the grace that you've given these comedians who didn't do how you done it do the young boys get the same grace? Uh, no. And here's why. Well, well, it, 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 uh, 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 I, I, let me. Okay, here's what's happening in my head right now, Ham. Okay. My idea. Uh, I'm basically as I talk to you, I'm okay. an air traffic controller, and my thoughts are all coming in trying to land. And I gotta try to get them in order and d d decide who who goes first. There you go. So when you tell me to land, I gotta land a lot of fucking planes because <laughs> of how I think. I think mm -hmm. longhand. I, I I don't know how to think shorthand. Um, here's here's the grace that should be given to those brothers. Okay. The brothers who seek to be better. Hmm. The brothers who understand that uh life is a lot more than just figuring out how many girls you can fuck 
it's really not that hard to get laid it really isn't hmm. the dudes that know or that come into the knowledge or don't run from the quiet voice that tells them that their line is important even though they don't know what their great great grandfather's name is or what he did it is important that they become a great great grandfather that their children know about, that their seed knows about and if they don't know that they don't know how to seek that and they don't know how to pick mates to help them build that that's on niggas like me this is how my purpose outgrows comedy this is how i love comedy i still do it i still get bread doing it i still get bread writing for it but bruh i got to reach them dudes you talking about mm -hmm. because those who don't have it whether i like it or not whether you like it or not mm -hmm. they're not leaders and they're gonna perish mm. bruh do you do you think you and i have the time to rewrite revelations do we have the time man <laughs> the four horsemen of the apocalypse are gonna ride and that ain't got shit to do with what jeff brown got to say get your shit together standing on the side of the wall like this ain't it hmm. wash your ass hmm. brush your fucking teeth cut your hair and walk up bro and maybe you know my son's 17. Okay. you know he don't move like a lot of these young cats do because he wasn't taught. He didn't see his daddy around none of these things. The dudes his daddy was around was goddamn grown ass men mm -hmm. that walk up to you. Bro, I'm thinking about doing a short about this where a young dude, 22, 23, walk up old school style. And I'm not saying he in a zoo suit, but he is classically fly. He looked good in his shit. He ain't out of mm -hmm. shape. And he walks up and goes, hey, uh, hey, Stephanie, how, or, or hey, how you doing? My name is Mike. What's your name? Stephanie. Hey, sisters, how y'all doing? I thought you looked good. I thought you should know. I'd like to take you out sometime. Not tonight. We in this club, in this situation. It's something different. How would you like to have some coffee sometime this week? During the day, here's my number. I'm out. That's some goddamn grown ass man shit that most dudes ain't doing. And any woman who will not accept that is helping you out, nigga. You dodging a bullet. Mm -hmm. She cannot take a, a unsolicited chivalry. Like I'm 100 say, Jeff, that don't work no more. You are exactly right, man. It don't work on the haystack. It work on the needles. Hmm. You, you want so a needle, don't you? Okay, but what do you say about like so for instance you she says yes, right? Yeah, it's more popular now as an example to give your Instagram Right, she want to follow you and connect with you on an Instagram and okay. then she's gonna um to an extent vet you out via your IG Which she adds sure. an what but it adds an entirely different dynamic what you said is it is that also gonna be what she what she sees What do you mean? Well, so like on your Instagram, you know, like what is the Instagram? What is your profile showing? I know you, 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 uh, you pre presented the suave, right? Yeah. Um, cool, calculated, clean. Um, yeah. but then there's a different with the Instagram being involved in things of that nature. Do you think that changes the dynamic at all? I hope so. I hope so. I hope, I sincerely hope that a girl takes your Instagram, looks at it and decides that you don't have enough shit. Because again, the universe has done you a favor. That's the wrong woman to be fucking. That's the wrong woman. Would you like to get her pregnant with her shallow ass? Would you like to have to try to negotiate raising a child with a broad that shallow? Please let this shit help you. Please stop talking about what the women won't do. That's not your responsibility, brothers. Could you please read Isaiah 3, chapter 3 and chapter 4, so you can see where we are and where we're going? Would you please, all, all you niggas, this is what it is. And, and this is the scary part, Ant. The ordinary people, the ordinary dudes, 
<laughs> How? The ordinary dudes don't like the ordinary women. Well, too fucking bad. Too fucking bad. If you don't, if, if you are ordinary dude, what the fuck think make you think you're supposed to get an extraordinary broad? You supposed to get one of these ordinary ass broads and y'all go on and perish together. <clears throat> the one of the sentiments, Uncle Jeff, based on your last statement, was actually it's actually the inverse. Hmm. Is that the women have a level of delusion mm -hmm. which allows them to not even see the ordinary men that they actually match up with. What do you think about that? I think. I think that 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 that's wonderful because they're going to perish. <laughs> All that shit, brother. We are talking about different buckets of shit. It's just shit. Here are the people who are going to make it. The men who have a skill when the power go out. The men who can take charge, respect, and give authority fairly. And the women who follow them. And the rest of it is who these body bags is for, nigga. <laughs> That's it. Bodies, 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 bodies. That's it. You can like it, don't like it. Brothers, I ain't mad at all of y'all. I'm reaching out to you. I I have an I, encyclopedia. An, encyclo an encyclopedic log of monumental fuck-ups that I myself have made. And I make them open to you. When I do my, when I fire my shit back up with, with the, the kind of, AI, thank you for playing the AI shit. I accidentally sent you a uh, video and audio. I should have sent you video and video because I have a video that goes with that. Okay. Audio. They work good. No, they work well. I'm editing AI it's like that. I'm doing that shit. Uh, I have an obligation to put out what I believe is the truth and the right way because I am the last of those with the street knowledge. I'm the last of it. The creator done put this on me. Do you know how much I would just rather do some other shit than try to, than try to do this? But God put this on certain people. It's been put on me to do it. To tell young brothers what I what it is I think and feel. And if you don't get me, you don't get me. And I'm wrong. I'm overblowing this. I'm okay with all of that. But if you do, bruh, you better say if you if if you can see what I see, you better set yourself up to lead. You hmm. better find it's it's brothers ain't gonna take it from me, Ham. That's why I gotta give it to you. I gotta give it to you. Cause you'll take it from me. You'll take this long-winded shit. Pause, Uncle Jeff. Okay, okay. <laughs> You'll take this long-winded drivel. <laughs> this fucking platitude in this. You'll take it and go, you know what? I see this. I see that. And it's a 19-year-old you can talk to that I'm just an old-ass nigga to. Doesn't matter. What matters is that he gets it. And all this other shit ain't gone work young man it's not you're complaining about it because it don't work you just don't like the solutions but they're not mine they're the creators okay 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 hmm. let me show you this picture let me catch up on these supers really quick like share subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend hit that like button right now if you can that helps the channel the most I have one follow-up question. I'm going to show you this picture. <clears throat> Granville was popping. But the two dollars is hand. You young enough to know he full of shit right now. See what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't reach that dude. You mm -hmm. gonna have to. Pretend. Joel with the ten dollars is hand. One of your lady panelists last month said that a man that makes five thousand more per year than her isn't doing well enough. Imagine being a dude, a ninety thousand dollar dude, having an eighty five k woman tell you you ain't good enough. What Come you on. think about this type of shit, Uncle Jeff? Shit I, like that. Shit like that. Shit I like think that. that woman did him a favor. I think if he spends fifteen seconds in her presence more, whatever more. I think here's what I think about that. I think, well, no, because I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, Go ahead. 
I don't want to, I don't want to curse a child. So I won't say up to have a baby with, but I think if a woman who makes $85,000 a year can tell you as a good man, as a man who will respect her, as a man who will take on the job of putting your life on the line for her, of putting your masculine energy in the way of her so that you, her, and the creator can get alignment. If she can tell you that $50,000 or $40,000 is not enough survival tickets for her, she has done you the biggest favor. Get the fuck away from her. And if you don't, you get everything you deserve. I hope she give you a disease. I hope she make you lose money because that way, then you'll be able to give a lesson to another young man one day. Because you, sir, if you're going through that, you seem to think there's some type of pussy shortage I'm not aware of. Every one, vagina comes standard, young man. I don't know if you knew that. It comes standard. Peace. Earthiness and submission are options. And you have to go find those options. And all I hear you do is complain about the ones that don't have it. I can tell you right where to find the ones that do, but you niggas don't want to hear that. You don't even want to try it. Try wow. it. Wow. Wow. Tell me I'm wrong. Hmm. And I can, I, I, and I can, without outline that, we can outline that later. Yeah. You want to go through this one? Hmm. You want me to read it? What it uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, because hmm. I got the chat in a bit. Wait, okay, yeah, because it's said okay. <clears throat> Nigga talking about game and leading, and he a lost lamb in these streets. Hamp, he leading hundred riders into death out. Uh here's what I say about this. Uh it it reeks. It reeks of pain. That brother in pain. That brother been through a lot of bad shit. And I remember one time before I signed out of uh, Fight Club, I said, hey man, go find your father. And people let me know that his father was dead. Like I was supposed to back off of that. He still need to go find his father. You need to, first off, your father, if he's dead, he's outside of time, pain, and flesh. So he moves at the speed of thought. Again, this is not shit I made up. This is shit I read, and a lot of you don't do that. He moves at the speed of thought. You can commune with him. What have you learned about him? Study him. Study his mistakes. Look at his life and questions you have. Take them to wise men so that they can guide you out of this pain you in. Brother, you need to go find your father. That's what I say to that. And to get, I'm the wrong place to get your wisdom, apparently, because you have decided to come up here and spend money on a day that's the, devoted to me, a nigga you can't stand. There are 9,999 other things you could be doing. You know what got you here? Pain. There's something in your subconscious that I speak to directly. And it makes you uneasy. And I get it, bro. I'm sorry for what you went through. And you're not my enemy. If I saw you in the street and you needed help, brother, you got me. And if they come for us... While we together, I would die for you. I'm not mad at you. I don't get, I don't get, see this right here, bro? What? Do not acknowledge anything that I've said and pay money to not acknowledge it. You can't get there unless you're in pain, bro. Well, so he, he has said this one kind of back to back, Uncle Jeff. Yeah. Um, But he says, with the $5, says, this old head run around in circles more than these women <clears throat> yeah that that speaks to his hemp i'm not here because i don't make sense or 
D with the two dollars. Is that a team rocket jacket, Unc? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is uh, that's another thing I do. I collect varsity jackets, I love them. So, yeah, that's I just bought this in a swap meet. And we're and you were you were referencing a time on what was the fight club, not necessarily to him directly. Were you just giving a story? No, I'm talking to you. We, we, for, you remember, uh, uh, fight club, uh, I, I was on, I okay. Wasn't really... Well, well, here, let me bring you up to speed. Fight Club was basically this this channel where this dude named Aaron was. Oh, basically... oh I know, I know it. Sorry, I just never really watched. I, I, right. I caught up to it on some of these other channels, though. I caught up right. to it. He's driving this bus full of window liquors, and and there'd be certain people got some sense, and I didn't know that. I thought it was more like your show when I first went in there. It's not. You have to have hateful shit on deck to say. And there's there's videos of me roasting niggas. And what this dude would like to do is constantly pay money back to back to kick me out. And what happened is that Fight Club was ruined by this behavior because whenever you uh, uh, whenever you serve only the lowest common denominator, your days as a business are numbered. If all you serve is the lowest common denominator, it's in something like this, it ain't gonna work. And so that that was part of the lowest common denominator is that they'll kick a nigga off that's making sense. And pretty soon, it just became a place with people with vitriol and twenty dollars to just do 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 dumb shit. Well, he was there, and one night when he went to throw me off, he was saying something that made sense. Right before that. I said, you need to go find your father. And everybody went crazy. That's fucked up. He's dead and dead. Because they really, they've had nobody. This is why spirituality sounds weird to them. It's like taking a well-done steak and throwing it over in the bed, in the crib of a toddler. They're just not ready for, for this level of shit, which is why I'm not talking to them. I'm not, I, I, I teach the master class. You're not ready. So I don't, I give it to other cats who understand, Hamp understands that I'm his elder. That doesn't make me, I've, I've had the opportunity to fuck up more than him. I guarantee you, Hamp, I have fucked up way more than you. Mm -hmm. You line your fuck ups up, Hamp, you ready? I got some fuck ups, some dumb ass shit, bruh. <laughs> Woo! Because mm -hmm. of that, and I learned, I got to give that down to you, and then you give it down. You, that dude, might be ready for your class or a class under you he ain't there's a lot of shit this nigga is calculus up here you get your pre-algebra ass on downstairs that's yeah joe with the ten dollars says i only used the 85 and 90 thousand to show how mathematically silly the sentiment was in the first place that scenario was not a reflection of me or me trying to date any particular person GBG bill with the five dollars says, "My guy, whose father is dead?" Exclamation point. My father is alive. What are you talking about? Maybe it's a different person. No, it's is it the high yellow dude with the with the head like a punk, pumpkin head? High yellow dude. <laughs> well, I'm gonna drop the link in a minute so you can talk to the, whoever want to hit the link. Yeah, come your um, ass on. Yeah, Grand Bill with the five dollars says, "What combo we had? When did this happen?" 187 was popping with the two Canadians says Uncle Jeff, the inmates ran the asylum. Uh Granville with the five dollars says, Yo, Hamp, the entire situation he is talking about has been fabricated in his head. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to drop the link now? <laughs> what? Uh, the fuck? Uh, okay, are you uh, are you <laughs> Are we gonna? Yeah. Allow so now here's, before uh, that, here's here's what it depends upon him. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, before I unleash the sword of light on this motherfucker, okay, I need to understand. I need it understood that we gonna both get to speak uninterrupted, and he can say whatever he likes as long as I can. One hundred percent. And so, I'm also gonna... let me clarify: um, when the guest is the guest, the guest actually has more leeway um as well okay thank you thank you, you know because that the... case, drop the motherfucking link all Let's right go. 
Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Hit that like button right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. Introduce a few things I'd like to discuss. A few things that beleaguer and beset our people. One of them being the word nigga. A very ugly, negative word. Unfortunately, it must exist because there are some of us it describes perfectly. Let's discuss them, shall we? If you leave your house in rollers and or slippers and or plastic bags, you, sir, ma'am, are a nigga. The message, ladies and gentlemen, don't be a nigga. Hopefully, as I look out, all I see is a sea of beautiful black people. Let's leave that word behind us. Gotta use it sometime, because you know, we all got him. I got him in my family, my uncle Snooky is one, for example. Thought I missed him because I loved him. Turns out it's just because he's so damn stupid. <laughs> you know how you spell words around kids you don't want them to know? My Uncle Snooky always spelled the wrong damn words. <laughs> and putting these toys together, when we gonna tell these K-I-D-S ain't no Santa Claus? <laughs> we go out in the C.A.R. and smoke some dope. <laughs> this is stupid ass. I sat down to a game of Scrabble with this man, figuring I could blow his mind with some of my logic. He blew me away with some head. Oh, boy, you ain't been around long enough to play a game like this with me. I got a word for you. P-Y-O-N-S-O. I said, P -O -P Boy, that pencil. <laughs> Want me to use it for you in a sentence? My nephew kept acting a fool, so I stabbed him in the eye with a pencil. Okay. I'm trying like hell, and he is just going to town. I got another one for you. Pass me that bag. B O F U B M. Bob. Boy, that both of them. He kept acting a fool, so I stabbed out both of them. A little bit more to think about. This is 1994. The HIV virus knows no friends. Protect yourselves. Um, I don't know. It's not too much more I can say about that. Except, you know, fellas carry condoms. Ladies, carry condoms for your stupid-ass boyfriends. <laughs> Seriously, ladies, we will not think any less of you if you whip out a 12-pack of Trojans. Unless, of course, there's only three left in the box. I was watching the survey, scared the hell out of me. They say the people least likely to be infected with the HIV virus are women between the ages of 55 and 80. <laughs> this changes my dating plans all the way around. People asking me, Jeff, where you going after this? Tribeca? No! Shady Pines convalescent home. <laughs> Y'all be chasing these young women. I'll be running around going, ooh, Martha, something about the way you drag that oxygen behind you drives me crazy. Come here. <laughs> Shout out to my sponsor, Eurofunk. Peace and love. Everybody agrees that we need this.